I'm so glad you could join me. I'm Pixie. I make videos about art and books. I forgot to do this intro for my first Gothtober vlog because I was just too excited. Today's Monday. It's a new Gothtober week. I took the weekend off from filming, so I have some reading updates because I did not take the weekend off from reading. We had two live shows and in one of them I started the monster romance. So I only read a few pages because I had some other things to do. But so far, it seems really fun. I will keep you updated, I promise. I'm also weirdly reading a second romance. And it's weird because I don't usually read a ton of romance. But I needed a new read for the disability prompt. And in the live show on Olivia's channel, we were talking about the Brown Sisters trilogy by Talia Hibbert, which is contemporary romance. And I read the first book in that series, Get a Life, Chloe Brown, and I really enjoyed it, but I didn't continue the series for some reason. And I remembered that one of them had autistic representation. So I'm currently reading Act Your Age, Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. I'm not that far into it, but so far I'm really enjoying it. And since I like Chloe so much, I kind of trust Talia Hibbert with my heart. I'm also... Yesterday, Sunday, we also had Gothtober reading sprints. And during those, it was finally time to continue with Paradise Lost. So I am now... I've read this much. But actually more than that, because there are footnotes in the back. So this marks where I am in the footnotes because I'm trying to I'm reading like a bit of the text and then I flip back to the footnotes and I read a bunch of the footnotes to sort of try to keep up and try not to miss too much like there is going to be meaning in this that is lost on me partly as a 21st century human being also as an atheist who, while I have been enmeshed in Christian culture my whole life, there's a lot of the Christian mythology that I don't know about because I wasn't raised in like a religious household specifically. And yeah, I, I just, I know some basics, of course, but there are things I'm gonna miss. Paradise Lost is divided into 12 books and I finished book eight last night. And in book eight, there's a really funny bit where Adam is talking to the angel Raphael and he's talking about the creation of Eve. And then he explains that they had sex, basically. He doesn't say that, but that is very much what it means. And Raphael responds, well, love is all well and good, but carnal desires, not good. And Adam, makes a really valid point he's like but how do you express love with like how do angels express love if not by touch and Raphael basically responds about like air melting into air and soul enmeshment it's very locked tomb and like obviously the locked tomb is a very religious <laughs> coded inspired book so in the locked tomb, there's the saying, one flesh, one end, which is obviously inspired by Christian mythology, because in this, um, he says, one flesh, one heart, one soul. And I read that and I was like, mm. and he says that right before he goes into the sex scene, quote unquote, I, and I, mm. I had a lot of emotions about Gideon and Hero because of that. Like that's that's romantic, that's sexy. And with In the Locked Tomb, One Flesh One End is for necromancers and cavaliers. And it's like taboo for necromancers and cavaliers to have romantic sexual relationships. But it's so intensely, intimately coded. Like, that relationship is so weird. That sounds judgmental, I don't mean it like that, but it's in, it lives in this, like, grey area where it's more intense than a friendship and very different from a familial relationship, 
but it's also not supposed to be more intense than a friendship in the way that a romantic or sexual relationship is. It it like it lives in between all of those things. It's it's super interesting. Anyway, I didn't mean to make this about the locked tomb, but it is. It kind of is. Everything is about the locked tomb. <laughs> so yeah, this week is gonna be light romance and then this dense classic. So very uh, opposites attract. The unity of opposites is the theme of this video. Also, another important update. I fished out both of the pencils that I dropped behind the couch. I know I said it was it was gonna lie there to Christmas because that's what I thought, but today I had my housing support here again and we cleaned a bunch. I was sweeping in here with the broom and I remember the pencils and I was like, I may as well just fish these out now. I don't think you know, but I did drop a second pencil behind the couch today, the day after I dropped this one. It's a, it's a hazard back there, but I need to have pencils near me, but I should probably keep them on the, um, on the table instead. That is the Monday update. T tomorrow I have my doctor's appointment, so I don't know what's going to happen the rest of that day. Stay tuned to find out. Good morning. It's Tuesday. I have my doctor's appointment in a couple of hours. And because of that, I got not a single wink of sleep last night. So instead, I finished Actor Age Eve Brown, and it was really good. It absolutely wrecked me emotionally, and this is why I don't read romance that often. Like, I'll read about the most gruesome, traumatic shit, and I'll be fine. But the simple idea of two people loving each other, I cannot handle. I'm sure my therapist is gonna have some feedback about that that I'm gonna hate to hear. <laughs> but that's what she's there for. I've only read one other of Talia Hibbert's books, but they have in common so far that she makes both of the people in the relationship really fleshed out as characters, and they both have their personal issues to overcome, and the stakes are appropriately high. I care so much about these characters. This one hit especially hard because both of them are autistic and they've had different struggles with that and I saw so much of my experience reflected. Normally when I cry I give a book five stars but I'm gonna have to give this one four. Even though Tolly Hibbert is a queen, we love her. In this one, she did use a thing that I personally really dislike, which is stating in a book, this wasn't like a romance novel. When we both know full well that it is, I'm just not a fan of that um, technique. So I'll, I'm deducting a star because of that. But, but it's an extremely well-written, romance novel and I really enjoyed it despite the fact that I just cried heaps. <laughs> I'm gonna have breakfast now and then head to my doctor's appointment and hopefully I'll have some good news when I return. Hello, it is Wednesday, Wednesday evening. I went to the doctor yesterday and it went pretty well. We decided to put me back on antidepressants which might seem like a weird thing for stomach issues, but this is actually done sometimes for IBS. And relevant is also that my stomach issues got worse when I quit my antidepressants a year and a half ago. And I've probably been too stubborn about trying to be unmedicated. I just like not having to deal with the, the side effects. But it turns out that the side effects of not being medicated are worse. So I'm currently going through the initial adjustment period. If you've ever been on antidepressants, you know that when you first start taking them, it can feel a little like being hit by a train. 
and that's kind of what I'm dealing with at the moment. So I haven't done a whole lot today. I don't have a reading update, but I figured I would give the update on the health situation. Now I am going to bed and I'm going to pick out a new audiobook to read and I will uh, update you on that. But yeah, um, now that I've read Act Your Age, Eve Brown, I have ticked off the disability prompt and I could also use it for the BIPOC prompt. I still do want to read fifth season though because I've had it for a while and I've only heard good things about it. But Paradise Lost is prioritized since I started that last year and I, I like to finish things. Finishing things is just such a hit of dopamine. But I would love, I would also love to get to If We Were Villains because I've told so many people that I'm finally reading it this year. So it would be a bit of a letdown if I don't read it. But it's only the 11th right now. So I have a lot, a lot of time left in the month. But we'll see. Hi. So since I started antidepressants last week, my stomach has started to feel a little bit better. So, but my anxiety has really spiked. But so I figured today I would try to get out to one of these solidarity protests for Palestine. And I made it through about halfway. And then I had to leave to um, take care of my tummy. Um, but it was better than nothing. And I'm really glad that I went. I posted a video on Instagram and TikTok uh, making a short comment about my views on the matter. The short version is that Palestine has my full sol solidarity. The Israeli government is an imperialist military state and they are basically committing a genocide against Palestinians and they're being backed by the largest imperialist power on the planet, the US. And this situation has been built up to not only with the 75 years of occupation, but also with increasing provocations in the recent months, like the attack against the refugee, refugee camp in Yemen, and also an attack uh, against the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is a very important holy site. And so it was, it shouldn't have been a surprise that some kind of retaliation was going to happen. You know, it's, it's a completely horrifying situation and it means that we need to fight capitalism because imperialism is, as we know, an inevitable consequence of capitalism. And if you live in an imperialist country uh, like me, the task is to fight the imperialists where you are because they are complicit as well. Like Sweden where I am, sells weapons to Israel and all the politicians have come out with unequivocal support for Israel. It's it's really strange to see all this unfold and keep like doing what you normally do, but you kind of have to find a way to to continue doing your thing and also continue to see, look at what's going on and continue to care. So, you know, I, I, I'm sure you can all keep two thoughts in your head at the same time and know that uh, my heart is with Palestinians. Even when I am talking about books or making a joke about Paradise Lost, which I will probably be doing shortly because I'm sitting down to uh, reading sprints with Olivia in a minute and I'm gonna probably finish Paradise Lost. So that'll be fun. I'm still putting off the monster romance because I'm a little bit. I've technically finished Paradise Lost, but I don't feel ready to fully talk about it yet because I read the first half last year. So I want to go back and reread some stuff before I give my full thoughts. I was in reading sprints earlier today and Hannah said I should just let it go and be finished with Paradise Lost, but I'm not finished yet. I also started a new painting today about Palestine solid solidarity. 
which isn't what I had planned to do this week. Obviously, I need to design a Patreon sticker and I also have another painting started that I want to finish at some point, but it just felt urgent to, um, to make something to process everything I'm feeling about that situation. So yeah. Also, this outfit is really nothing special, but I like the pink with the yellow. And I have a skull, skull necklace to match my uh, emotional support skull back there. So, enjoy. I am gonna go to bed now and listen to Lord of the Rings on audio and play I Love You, which is my current bedtime relaxation game. Proof that I eat vegetables sometimes. cute and whimsical and just fun. It didn't end up being spicy, which was probably like a good first foray for me into this genre. I say first, I don't know if I'm gonna make another, but I could, I might, who knows. Right, maybe I should explain the plot. So basically, there's Earth and then there's another dimension and this dimension is all one organism. And the monster girlfriend is a fragment of this other dimension organism that's like broken free and is forming her own consciousness and forming her own body and she can change her body at any time to anything. The human is a witch scientist who's like doing research about this other dimension and so that's how they meet and then chaos ensues basically it's honestly a kind of interesting setting and like an interesting what if what if the uh, the earth was neighbor dimensions with this giant monster entity who wanted to eat people and absorb their knowledge and there were also like which university is doing research about it. I kind of would have enjoyed a more thorough investigation or like exploration of that. But I guess that would make it more of a fantasy book than a romance book. So, you know, I don't regret reading this, but I also don't think I'm going to read the sequel. So make of that what you will. Hi, welcome back. Let's address what happened with this vlog. Because today, as I am speaking, it's November 25th. So it's been a while since Gothtober ended and um, I just wanted to wrap it up. Basically, my energy levels took a nosedive. I think because of a variety of factors, uh, starting medication is definitely one because side effects you know body getting used to new chemistry can take some energy the personal thing i had happen that i mentioned was also a bit draining it, it it's not like anything dramatic and i am completely fine it just was draining and maybe i was trying to do too much with the like content creation challenge as well as gothtober and making my art and stuff I don't know, but what basically what happened is I went into survival mode and I've just been focusing on like feeding myself and uh, cleaning myself and those kinds of things, which are very important. Um, but the good news is that my stomach is feeling a bit better. So 
hopefully it's we're on like an upward trajectory and yeah i've just i've just been having to take it a bit easy now let's talk about the books i read we we, we already talked about these the good thing about you know doing this in november is that i have had time to read a few more books i didn't get to fifth season during gothtober but i have read it now and i really really liked it so we're gonna talk about that and also just another gothic book the daughter of dr moreau by sylvia moreno garcia uh, which i also really liked but let's start with paradise lost Gotta make sure that it's the right side up. I gave this four stars. I found it really, really interesting. And I have a few points I wanna touch on. Also keep in mind that I am coming at this as an atheist out of a literary historical interest, right? Um, so the Bible mythology isn't something I buy into. And it was really interesting to me to see because like occasionally there were quotes where I was like, yeah, this makes sense to me in my worldview. But there's also a ton of stuff that I'm just like, what? what? One of the things that does really resonate with me is how Satan says or implies basically that the rule of God is undemocratic. Like he compares God to a tyrannical king. And I think that's really interesting, particularly because Milton was contemporary with the English Revolution. And he was, you know, against monarchy. Being able to draw that parallel is, is very interesting because like Milton's, the point Milton is trying to make here is that, you know, God's rule is just and i suppose the difference is that he viewed uh, king charles as like an unjust ruler but according to milton uh, god is a like justified ruler and that's why he gets to be almighty i guess maybe one could see like absolute monarchy as uh, blasphemous because it's like a human being acting as if they're god but yeah, speaking of like Milton's point, another important point um, I understand it as him trying to make is that God can like foresee everything that's gonna happen. So he knows that humanity is gonna fall, like Adam and Eve are gonna eat the apple, commit the original sin and like be cast out from paradise. But he really stresses that he doesn't make it happen, he just foresees it, it's like they have free will, so it's their own fault, like their own responsibility. But, but, there's also a quote where he says, what I will is fate. So which one is it? I don't know. Um, and he also sends like an angel down to talk to them and warn them so not so that they can avoid it but so that it will be their own fault when they do it which i think is messed up like don't get me wrong i don't think <laughs> i don't think it's the case where like satan's uprising against god should have been successful because it sounds like satan just wanted to like put himself in god's place and be like another tyrant so that doesn't really make much of a difference in the end but he makes some fair points in his criticisms of god which i think is really fun satan is also really like emo and brooding and i looked up like what exactly is the big influence that paradise lost has had and i got the <laughs> The result I got was the so-called Byronic hero, basically the like brooding anti-hero who's like morally gray and like tortured. So 
the next time you read a book with like a, a love interest who's like sexily morally gray you can think about satan and uh, thank john milton <laughs> another thing i found interesting was that after they eat the apple so after the fall they talk about how as a punishment for eve basically adam invents misogyny but misogyny has already existed and i think this is really interesting because it's a case of like the reality in which the book was written versus the reality in which the book takes place are kind of coming at odds because like milton couldn't escape the uh, norms of the society he lived in and i don't think he was able to conceptualize a truly misogyny free world and so when misogyny gets invented i was like okay <laughs> um that's that was kind of funny to me but yeah it was a really interesting read and i also want to say about this that you know it was definitely challenging like it's an epic poem in verse from the 1600s and it's also in my second language like i do consider myself fluent in english but still but it wasn't as hard as i like built it up to be like i really had to pump myself up to sort of sit down and open it back up but once i started reading it wasn't as difficult as it felt and i mean i was also helped helped by the footnotes in the back but also when you read something like this i think it's a really useful mindset to sort of accept that maybe some words you you don't understand and you're gonna benefit more from staying in the flow of the text than you will from pausing to look up a word in the dictionary and then continuing it's obviously like up to each person how they want to approach something like that but i tend to be on the side of like just plowing onwards because when it's something like this like it's it's fiction and there are no stakes i am not being quizzed on this i think it's a more enjoyable experience to sort of stay in the flow and just trust that i get most of it so i'm gonna get the big picture and if there's an adjective i don't completely understand that's fine and i also can look it up if i want i'm really glad i read this so that was paradise lost also, I already talked about the monster romance and I don't have like a ton to say about it, but I did want to add that I kind of felt like it was more like the act one of a longer book than a full book in itself. But I saw that there's a sequel to it, so maybe the book like got cut in half or something. I don't know. I'm sorry that I said I would finally read if we were villains and I didn't get to it. I, I will one day. Maybe I will do like a combo reading vlog and read that and the athletic, like a dark academia theme. I could also read Society for Soulless Girls. That sounds really fun. Anyway, let's talk about the fifth season. After I read this, I was so mad that I didn't have the other books because it's first the first book in a trilogy. So, so I did order the other two, and I also picked up the matching version of the first book, because it would have annoyed me to hell and back to have just two and have it like not, not match. Um, and I also found it kind of annoying to read the Swedish translation. The reason I have it is because it was really cheap on sale, and so I bought it. And I'm really glad I did. I don't know why it says climate thriller on the front cover of this edition, because like the climate theme is present, but I wouldn't say it's the most prominent. And it's just not a thriller, unless mm, I have completely misunderstood the genre. It, it is a dark fantasy book. 
that's what it is. And it's an extremely well done dark fantasy book. It's dark without being gratuitous and the world building is really interesting. N.K. Jemisin doesn't pull from like medieval Europe like a lot of fantasy does, but the sort of level of technological development in some ways is similar to like a feudal level of technology, but also in some ways seems more advanced and the character work is really, really good. I don't want to say too much because I want you to read it and experience it with as little spoilers as possible, but I will say that I think it uses the tools of fantasy to speak to real world issues in a really subtle and masterful way that I really, really appreciate. And I, I am very excited to read the rest of the series and see what happens. Because there's some wild shit going on. The magic in this is also really, really fascinating. And like, it doesn't really work like anything I've seen before. Like I've seen similar, similar things, but it's just really cool. And I am really glad I finally read it. I'm kind of mad that I didn't read it sooner, but it's so good. I also read The Daughter of Dr. Moreau because Hannah is hosting a Silvio Moreno Garcia read along where we read a book by her every month and in October it was this one and I read it a bit late but I made it to the live show so it's all good and so it's loosely inspired by The Island of Dr. Moreau by H.G. Wells and I've read the original and I don't feel like it has aged very well I, I really, really liked her take on it. I ended up giving it four stars. My minor complaints were basically, basically my complaint with every Silver Myrna Garcia book, except Mexican Gothic, which is that um, romance and relationship stuff takes more space and there's like less focus on the spooky stuff that I am interested in. Um, but she writes the relationship stuff really well because she's an excellent writer of character. This was also a book that spoke to a question with these. Um, this is more like sci-fi, um, but using these like fantastical, unrealistic things um, to sort of touch on things that are real. And I always think that's really neat. A couple of more things before we wrap up. I started a painting for Palestine Solidarity and because of how much fatigue I have had and how little I've been able to do, I haven't been able to finish it so I'm really sorry that I have to end this video without showing a finished painting. I know that's really unsatisfying. I did the best I could. Keep an eye on my Instagram if you want to see it whenever it does get finished. Also. I'll put some articles and stuff in the description about sort of the history of uh, Israel's occupation. So if you're feeling like unsure about this topic or you just want to learn more, see what the Marxists are saying about it, you can do so. It's not too late to learn new things. In fact, we kind of have to keep doing that and keep fighting. As I'm filming this, there's like a a four day pause in the killing. It's not really a pause, in my opinion. Um, I've seen reports that Palestinians are still being attacked and killed and uh, they're not allowed to celebrate that the hostages are, the, the hostages that have been returned they're not allowed to celebrate because they're labeling that as a celebration of terrorism, which is uh, wild, frankly. But also, like, have they, have they given Gaza access to clean water now? The water issue is on my mind a lot because if you don't have clean water, 
you um, you get sick and if you if you get diarrhea and you can't replace your fluids you basically die of dehydration it, yeah it's also really for easy for diseases to spread through contaminated water it's it's just a fucking disaster and it's inhumane and awful and we gotta keep fighting it because you know the israeli government wants us to move on and forget about this and stop watching what they're doing and stop criticizing what they're doing and we can't do that i've probably talked for way too long so i'm gonna stop thank you so much for hanging out with me this gothtober um because i haven't been able to do much this fall for because of my stupid health gothtober was really truly extra important for me it was a blessing i through the live shows i felt a lot less alone and it was really fun to get to feel like i am part of something even if i can't fucking leave my apartment and i also read some really good books and yeah it was it was really, really nice. I really appreciate Hannah, Olivia and Tish for organizing it year after year. And I am already very excited for next year. So I hope I will see you then. Thank you for making my fall a little less sucky. I super appreciate it. And until I see you next time, please take care.